Hey guys, welcome back. In last video, if we talked about undertones in detail, today we're going to talk about foundations. So uh, I'm going to point out some things uh, which I see people do when they're going to choose a foundation for themselves. And in my mind, I know. No, no, that is not the right foundation for you. Please do not buy that. So yeah, stick around because we're going to go over all the tips and tricks that you need to know before you go out to buy a foundation. Also, we are going to learn about how to choose the correct shade and formula for your complexion. But before that, I would recommend you go and watch the tutorial on how to choose your undertone. So, mission foundation it is. Let's begin. Hey there, you might want to grab a cup of coffee or tea before we start here. It's going to be a long video. Please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Okay, first things first, let's make this thing very clear. Do not rush into buying your foundation. Your foundation is the most important part when it comes to your base and it can make or break your entire look. So give yourself some exclusive foundation shopping time and do not expect it to happen instantly. Because if you rush it in, that's when you're going to make the most mistakes and end up buying an entirely wrong foundation. Oh, I'm done with groceries. Uh, let me buy that dress there. Oh, there's a makeup counter there. Let me go and buy my foundation. No. Go in with an attitude that I will walk in, spend in a little bit of time there and find the right foundation shade for my skin tone. Only then will it work. Before you walk into the store, you need to know your skin type because the type of your skin will decide whether you should go for the moisturizing cream-based foundations or the more lighter water-based ones. If you are the dry skin type, you would want to go for the cream-based illuminating foundations uh, with a little glow in them and completely avoid these if you are an oily skin type. For oily skin, you would want to opt for the uh, light water-based matte counterparts and if you are a combination with an oily T-zone, then you would rather mattify the T-zone uh, area which gets oily and use either on the rest of your skin. Okay, so now let's come to the actual process of buying a foundation. So when we go to a store, how do we match the shade of a foundation? What we usually do is we uh, go in the store and we swatch a couple of foundations on the wrist and go like... Oh, not this one. Not this one either. Mm, too light. Oh, that's the right one. So here's the number one thing. This and this are not the same. Especially in Indian skin tones, your hand is a completely different shade than your face. Okay? So go ahead, swatch your lipsticks, your eyeshadows on your wrist, but not your foundations. What you need to do is swatch your foundation on your cheek and bring it all the way down to your neck because you want to check how this color reacts to the rest of your body, your head, your neck and your décolleté so that it all comes together into an even tone. Check out on how to find the right undertone for your foundation right up here or down in the description box. Next on, when we step into a store, it's usually not the first thing in the morning where you can just go sit fresh faced with just your skincare on. Uh, right? Uh, we usually do it on our way back from work, which is towards the late afternoons, evenings, or maybe when you're just shopping in the mall. But that's when you usually have your makeup on, right? So that means we need to strip off some makeup in this cheek area, right? So we grab some uh, cotton swabs and makeup remover right from the store and then clear up this cheek area like this and then go ahead and swatch some foundations, right? which is fine, but remember that these uh, makeup removers and wipes will strip off the moisture from your skin as well along with the makeup, okay? So if I were to go in and apply the foundation right away on this skin, I would end up buying the wrong formula for my skin. So this area right here, I need to hydrate this area before I swatch on any more foundations. Believe me, it makes a lot of difference when you do that. So go ahead and ask the store guy for some moisturizer and hydrate this area before you apply the foundation. 
it will make a lot of difference. If I do not hydrate this area before I swatch the foundation, number one, I will definitely not see the formula of the foundation as it is because this dry patch will start absorbing moisture from the foundation and start cracking and looking dry and cakey and uh, I will definitely miss out on buying a really good foundation. So yes, we need our skin to react to the foundation the way it normally would. So definitely prep and prime before swatching the foundations. Next on, how do you normally apply your foundation? Do you use your fingers or a brush or a beauty blender? I typically dab on the foundation with my fingers first, spread it up with a, a brush and uh, then go over it with my beauty blender. How about you? You might either use only a beauty blender or only a brush or just your fingers. So just think over it. Why not? swatch with the tools that you actually use. We use our preferred uh, method of application because there is a certain expectation that we have when it comes to the coverage of the foundation that we plan to achieve. Like say, if you want a high coverage, we end up using your fingers. If you want a medium coverage, you use a brush. And if you want a sheer coverage, go over with the damn beauty blender, right? So yes, make sure that you swatch your foundations with the tools that you would normally use because that will give you an exact idea of the finish and the coverage that you are planning to achieve and that could actually be a deciding factor for buying the foundation. So I'm going to swatch this foundation right here on my jawline like this and go over it with a brush like this. Okay, this looks like a decent match. Uh, keep swatching the foundations until you find your perfect match and yes do not forget to re-moisturize your skin before every application so this one here looks like a good match but is this it do i end up buying this so here's one more mistake that we always do we would want to wait for this foundation to dry down because there are typically two things that could happen to a foundation. One, they could oxidize and two, they could either dry and cake out. So you would want to put on the foundation, wait for at least five to ten minutes, uh, go check out new lipsticks or check out new products and do whatever and check this foundation back after five to ten minutes. There is a possibility that your foundation has oxidized and gone darker. Now here's why. Uh, think of your skin like a fruit, uh, let's say a banana. So when you cut a banana and expose it to the oxygen in the air, the oxygen kind of steals an electron from the banana and that will cause the banana to break down. And what happens? It turns brown, right? That's exactly what happens to the foundation. It breaks down and oxidizes and it can go dark. Not all foundations, well, some of them, and it can happen over different time periods, okay? So what we want to do is see if this particular foundation changes color. If it goes darker, we know that this has oxidized and that will deter me from buying this foundation. Now, another thing that can happen to your foundation is that it dries down, okay? Uh, so drying down is very different uh, from oxidization. Here's how. When you first apply the foundation, it might give you a very glowy, satiny finish. But when you let it rest on your skin for some time, it might end up giving you a completely matte finish. Now why this happens? Liquid foundations are wet on the skin initially, right? So anything that's wet bounces back light. This might mislead you into thinking that this foundation has a glowy and shiny finish to it. Whereas it might actually end up uh, giving you a matte finish and darkening up a bit because now instead of bouncing back light, it's going to absorb light. But maybe that's not what you wanted and this will deter you from buying this foundation. So it's worth those five minutes, right? Let it dry down before you reach any conclusion. Please take this into consideration. You will find the right foundation shade. Next. Instead of checking the foundation swatch in a mirror in a store, please take some time off and go out and check the shade in natural light. Let's just understand, these stores have really good lighting and technology that will make you go wow over everything, okay? That is their marketing strategy. So these store lights will invariably trick you into buying the wrong foundation shade. Nothing, I repeat, nothing compares to natural sunlight. 
So grab your mirror, walk out of that store and see how it looks in that light. In case you do not have a mirror in your purse, borrow one from the store. And yes, camera selfies will not help you. The classic mirror will only be the right judge. And believe me, the results in natural light will be completely different from that in the store. In case you do not have that much of time, what do you do? Ask for samples. Good stores like Mac and Sephora have samples available so that you can go home, do the entire exercise in the convenience of your home and come back once you're sure about the feel and the look of the foundation. After all, it's all about finding the perfect shade of foundation, right? Okay, so that five minutes are up. Let me check up on my foundation swatch. I think this is pretty good a foundation. It's all come together pretty nicely. Uh, in case I did not, what would I do? I would have to repeat the entire exercise of, you know, swiping off, re-moisturizing, putting that foundation on, waiting for 5 to 10 minutes and then checking it again. So, yeah, keep doing that until you find your correct shade. Okay, one last tip that I personally follow is, uh, once you've zeroed down to the exact match, uh, the exact shade in preferably a MAC foundation, the next time what you do is just go on to foundation.com and enter that MAC shade or any other shade that you know. And voila, you've got matching shades in all the other different brands. These are more or less correct, but at least the next time you have a small, more accurate number of samples to test from. So you saw, when it came to foundations, there was so much of thought process behind it. There is so much more to a foundation than just a shade. The formula, the finish has everything to do with that perfect match, which in turn will give you the most perfect base, right? So there, I hope that was a mission accomplished. And what are you waiting for? Go out, start foundation shopping. And yes, do leave me a comment below. I love reading your feedbacks. I will see you the next time with another video. Till then, see you and stay beautiful.